Next up, I am pleased to uh, introduce, uh, introduce David Swanson. David is an anti-war activist, journalist, radio host, and author. He is also the executive director of World Beyond War and a campaign coordinator for Roots Action. Welcome, David. Thank you, Emily. Uh, what a powerful story we just heard. And we should remember that uh, Guantanamo is going strong uh, no matter what wars they claim to have ended. Um, thank you for including me with all of these wonderful people. Matt Ho said he, he wanted to belong to something. I am uh, very glad to belong uh, with all of you, all everyone speaking and not speaking here. I think Matt knows too that he belongs to something better now. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen and see if it works. I hope you're seeing a PowerPoint um, that I'm going to go through uh, really fast here. Um, see if I can get to the next screen. So it, just just a basic overview of, of what we've uh, been through. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, despite all the focus on the horrors of that one day 20 years ago, uh, and all the focus on the ending of a war as itself supposedly a catastrophe, the wars of the 20 years, we're looking at millions dead, injured, traumatized, homeless, the rule of law eroded, not just in certain spots, but around the world, the natural environment devastated, government secrecy and surveillance and authoritarianism increased worldwide, the, the right to protest constrained, the wars for freedom, and we're not getting our freedoms back uh, with the ending uh, of the wars for freedom. Terrorism increased, not eliminated, not decreased, increased worldwide. Weapon sales increased worldwide. Racism and bigotry spread far and wide trillions and trillions of dollars wasted that could have done a world of good, uh, wealth transferred upward to a handful of profiteers, a culture corroded, a drug epidemic generated in the United States, a disease pandemic made easier to spread, and the U.S. military turned into such a machine of one-sided slaughter that its casualties, despite being 98% of the media coverage, are less than 1% of those in these wars. And the top cause of death in the US military is suicide. On the other hand, we opponents of this madness uh, leave behind in these 20 years a number of additional wars prevented, wars ended, bases stopped, weapons deals stopped, money divested from weapons, police demilitarized, people educated, ourselves educated, and the tools to carry all of this further, as we must do, developed. These wars that uh, have used the excuse of war on terror have been in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Libya, Somalia, Syria, Yemen, Philippines, and additional military actions that they don't call wars in a dozen more countries listed on this slide. Uh, and then dozens of attempted coups, despite the endless wars on top of that. The dead, there ought to be a serious scientific study and survey. Now, if you're gonna justify these wars as somehow doing more good than harm, you have to know what the harm is. Uh, the best evidence we have suggests a couple of million dead in Iraq, over a million dead in Afghanistan and Pakistan, a total of almost 7 million dead, uh, and then 7,000 US troops on top of that. Um, so, uh, you're, you're looking at one-sided slaughters and nobody's being told that. And those envying the dead, of course, the much greater numbers, bigger than six or seven million, many millions of people injured, traumatized, made homeless, lives ruined. Financial costs uh, for everybody but a handful uh, of lucky short-sighted profiteers uh, include the, the direct cost uh, of the militarism, also the lost opportunities, the destruction, the future healthcare costs, the transfer of wealth to the wealthy, uh, and the ongoing cost of the military budget uh, that is increasing despite a war ending. Between 2001 and 2020, uh, with numbers from CIPRI, you're looking at uh, the U.S. military alone spending this amount of money. These, these are hundreds of billions of dollars a year. 
what people who look at the U.S. budget have been consistently telling us that there's another half a trillion dollars, not in those numbers. There's a couple of hundred billion dollars uh, spread across numerous other agencies outside the Pentagon, outside of some of the nukes in the energy department, the secret agencies, all of these military expenses, plus another hundred or two hundred billion dollars in debt for past military expenses and another hundred billion dollars or so uh, in the cost of health care for veterans. So we're looking at maybe twenty two trillion dollars um, in in military expenses just by the United States just in these 20 years. Uh, the Institute for Policy Studies has just come out with a report finding 21 uh, trillion dollars for that period. Um, so you, if you read reports that, that we've spent $6 trillion or we've spent $8 trillion on these wars, these are very well-intended reports from very good organizations that do tremendous work, but they normalize the bulk of the military spending, uh, which over these 20 years has not been 38% wrong. It's been 100% wrong. What could have been the calculations that economists ha have done, including at the University of Massachusetts uh, in Amherst, uh, you get more jobs and better paying jobs, putting the same dollars into decent things like education and clean energy. So apart from the moral and environmental and humanitarian concerns, just with the economics alone, uh, you're talking about much more than 22 or 21 trillion dollars uh, if you had spent it more wisely. Uh, and of course, with tiny fractions, you could end starvation on the planet. You could end the lack of clean drinking water on the planet. You could fund attempts to uh, forestall the destruction of the Earth's climate beyond the wildest dreams of the best environmental groups out there uh, if you just moved the money. So the money kills vastly more people even than those millions killed directly by the wars by being diverted from where it's needed. Looks like uh, I've reached the end and stopped sharing. And thank you very, very much for including me here. Thank you, David. Um, it's just wonderful to see the juxtaposition between what, you know, and for you to break it down for us, what the difference between what we spend it on and what we could have and what we lost also. Um, we here in LA with so much pollution and concentration on um, switching to clean energy, we have what's called a just transition campaign. And we need to just transition from war. Our entire economy needs to be decoupled from the war economy. So much fascinating jobs, so much fascinating work for, for people, for youth. Earlier in the program, I, I talked about Los Angeles and all the challenges we're going through. Imagine if instead of having the one of the seats of military industrial complex in Los Angeles, if all of that tens of billions of dollars were turned over into the rescuing of the Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area and all that could be done and how interesting it could be for people. Just in the LA Times um, today or yesterday was an article uh, bemoaning the fact that workers don't want to go back to work and, and people are realizing it's not just pay, it's that the work that American workers have been asked to do for decades has been brainless but also horrific imagine if if we were called to action for something much more beautiful we have the money you've just shown us that we have 